my name is Pastor Rebecca, and welcome to First Assembly's Church at Home. I'm praying that today you will give God the time and the space to really connect with you today. The Bible says that blessed are those who hear the Word of God and obey it. Today, my friends, I want to talk about pursuing God with a passion. We'll be taking the offering at the end. I just want to jump straight in. My time is limited, so I'm going to just go, go for it. I'd like to, to kind of stir in our heart a deep desire to know God. Oh, three people. God, wake them up, please. You've got to have to listen to preach with me. Okay, I want to, I want to stir a deep desire to, to please God. Is that good? I want to stir in our heart a deep desire to, to encounter Him, not just on Sunday morning, but actually throughout the week, that you can see that God is ordering and ordaining your steps every day of the week, not just on Sundays. I'd like to stir this in our heart and, and so that we can be able to receive God's blessing. Is that everybody's goal today, to be able to receive God's blessing? Yeah, can, can, you, can, you, can you say something back to me? Do you want to receive God's blessing in your life, yes or no? If it's not the blessing, it's going to be something else, and it's not as good as the blessing of God. So I think it's good for us to, to, to find this catalyst, this way of coming together as a group of people saved by grace, by grace that we'll be able to find a way to receive God's blessing. I love this verse that we just were singing that, you know, we were just singing that I am yours and you are mine. Man, this is all this is about. As believer, we are his and he thankfully, amazingly, astoundingly, he is ours as well. He dwells inside of us through the Holy Spirit. So this is what I, I this is my idea today and, and we'll see how that goes. But what's a, what's the big deal about being a Christian? What's the big deal? What's the big picture of being a Christian? Why do you guys exist for as believers? Like you didn't know I was going to quiz you, huh? So sorry. Like, hey, you're a little too, too, too much in my face right now. So maybe top of the list, one of the things, big goal as a Christian is to grow closer to God. Okay. So about 7% of you agree with that statement. Okay, I have more. I'm a, okay, I've got one kind of similar. Get to know God better. Yeah, is it, is it like up there with, as well? Okay, good, good. Um, be a blessing to others. Who would agree with that statement that one of my goals in life is to be a blessing to others? Not just because it's commanded in the word, but also it's good for others. Yeah? And not too much of a blessing. Maybe a good blessing. Not just like, oh, you're too much of a blessing. You need to scale it back a little bit. No, be a good blessing. What about growing spiritually? Oh, you guys are reading my notes up here. Okay, that's cool. Uh, developing fruit. Is that on anybody's radar? Developing fruit. Thank you, the Lord. Thank the Lord. Exercising your spiritual gifts. Uh, help others discover Jesus and faith. So, yeah, I prayed that prayer earlier. So, if people come your way this week when you're at the store, First of all, please go to the store. Don't avoid people. You know, don't avoid. Uh, I, I heard, I, I see so many of you were telling us about a family that you saw at the store. I see so many people at the store all the time. And yes, I'm all the time at the store for grocery shopping. That's a different story. But I see people at the store all the time. And man, it's like, perfect. I need you to talk to you. Maybe it's God's way of ordering those steps of ours so that we can have those connections with people in our life. Uh, how about worshiping God without hindrances? Is it on there? Yeah, it is on there as well. Uh, pray without ceasing. Do we have any prayer people? And all of you should be raising your hands. All of you should be like, yes, but not in front of everybody. Not in front of people. That's okay. That's okay. We, we're not going to call you out to pray in front of people. That's fine. Uh, how about discovering joy? I'm not just talking about the American value of happiness and what it entails. I'm talking about deep-seated, Holy Spirit-induced joy. That's one of my goals in life. I'm, I'm more of a pragmatic guy, so to be happy and to be joyful, I have to exercise it. I have to, I have to dig deeper. But when I pray and when I, and I worship, joy comes naturally more so in my life. How about healing from the past? You did not know you were going to be doing some uh, exercise with your brain this morning. How about healing from the past? Okay. All the faces, all the faces. 
We all have a story, good story, difficult story, difficult upbringing, difficult lifestyle, whatever. God is our healer. Can I have one person agree to this? God can heal our emotional trauma from our past and make something new. God is known as the redeemer. He can redeem the things that we've gone through and impose his will of fruitfulness in your life. God can do it as we cling to him, as we discover him, as we go closer to him, as we desire him with all of our heart and all of our being, as we try to go as close to him as possible, as we hide his word into our souls. God can heal our past. I have to believe this. How about leading your family? Now, nah, let's just leave, leave them alone. They'll lead themselves. That's cool. That's fine. That's fine. As, as, a, as a dad, as a husband, I have a call on my life to lead my family. If you're a single parent, you have a call on your life to lead your family as well in the ways of the Lord. Ooh, I have a tricky one. I had to put it in there because it's so good. Uh, maybe one of your goals is to be involved in your church. Okay, raise your hand. Three, two, one. Oh, just kidding. Maybe one of your goals is to see that God has ordained the church as a way to bless the world. Yes? That was not our idea. Yeah, that was God's idea all the way, that he decided to, to take the church, a group of perfect people, praise the Lord, a group of flawless people. We never have any relationship issues. We never disagree on anything. We never disagree about the color of the pews. We're perfect. Praise the Lord. No, we're not perfect. We're a bunch of, <clears throat> excuse me, dysfunctional people that have lots of issues. And I'm speaking to myself. There's a mirror right here. And we all have our own uh, special specialties of things and, and ways we think and we don't think the same. And even when you're married, you don't think the same. Can I have an amen on this? Even when you're married, you don't think the same. Thank the Lord. We are all unique and different. And God still calls us to be his church. Are you sure, Lord? Are you sure that's your idea? He says, yes. But don't worry, you're not going to do it by yourself. I'm going to send my Holy Spirit to be in you and with you every step of the way. Pursue the Holy Spirit, friends. Pursue the Holy Spirit as much as possible. This is just my intro, by the way. Um, so be involved with your church. I love this quote. I'm going to skip just a tiny bit ahead. Uh, don't read the next step yet. Oh, don't read it. Don't read it. Okay. I love this quote that I read this week from Tony, Tony Evans. Sorry, and I was going to try to imitate his voice, but it's impossible. I don't have to go. He, he, he hears people say that. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. True? Not true. Okay. Uh, the guy on the cross um, went to heaven, you know, doesn't have to go to church to be a Christian. And they are right. That's what he's saying. You are right. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Salvation is how? Through faith alone in Christ alone. Through faith alone in Christ alone. Through faith alone in Christ alone. That's what Reformation would teach us. You know, this is only through faith in Christ alone. You don't need anything else. But then he says, hey, you don't have to go home to be married. But stay away long enough and your relationship is going to be affected. Isn't that true? Stay away long enough, your relationship is going to be affected. There's so many things in the world that are going to be in the way of our relationship with spending time with believers and taking the time to come to Sunday morning service. Stay away long enough and your relationship will be affected. My goal is to grow closer to God through the office of the church the medium of the church, the, the channel of the church, because that is the way God has ordained it. Look at this big picture goal of being Christian. I told you about big prayers. That's, we're going to go back to one, the first slide before that. Loving others. Maybe it should have been at the top of the list. I don't know. I did not make like, the list. I didn't make the list. Loving others. Who would agree with this? That is something, an area that is sometimes so difficult to do, yeah? Because there's a lot of people that are not really lovable. Would you agree? And if you don't know anybody, maybe it's you. 
I said that with a smile. Yes? Okay. Just say, praise the Lord. Loving others, loving others, first commandment, uh, second commandment, love the Lord, love others, yeah? As believers, um, this should be at the very top of your list. So we're going to flip the list around, you know. Uh, oh, I, I had another one. Listen to God's voice and obey. Okay, that's good. But loving others is so important. So important. Not just when they are lovable, but especially when they are unlovable. If today you pray this prayer, God, help me love others better. Do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Or as soon as you leave the church, as soon as you go out of, to your car, as soon as something, as soon as you leave this, those doors, you know what's going to happen? God's going to say, okay, time to shine. Time to shine is right now, not tomorrow. Time to shine when we love others is right now and not tomorrow. Time to shine in loving others is not when it's convenient for me. Time to shine in loving others is not when I feel good about myself and all my, my oh, I'm going to use this expression, please forgive me. My stars are aligned. It's a horrible expression. This is not what I believe, but you understand what I'm saying. It's not just when I feel good about myself that I'm going to start loving others. God commands it before you feel good about yourself. Before you get the emotional rush of loving others, you're going to start loving them. And God sends us unlovable people Oh, man, what? No, I'm going to skip this. It's so funny how often when we pray, Lord, help me to love others like you love them, that God sends someone that is hard to love or unlovable. Oh, gulp. Whew. I only want the good kind of loving people. Would you agree with that? Maybe we need to stretch our faith just a little bit further. Inside of us, so those are all goals as, as believers that we have. Inside of us, there's this com common desire for growth, yeah? We want to stretch ourselves. We want to be more than what we are currently. And it's, been, it's implanted deep inside of our, of our souls and our mind, and we've got this longing to be more than what we are. You know, that's why one of the best questions is, hey, what do you want to do in five years? I was like, five years, how about right now? Five years is so far away, how about right now? We've got this, this longing to, to discover. Yeah, who loves the Discovery Channel, by the way? Okay, I never watch it. Um, but I like the idea of it. We, we want to, to develop ourselves. We want to better ourselves. We want to do more with our life. We want to uh, ingrange new knowledge. We want to be more. That's like part of who we are as human beings. Can you look back for just a second when you were a teenager? And if you are a teenager, hey. <laughs> Good job. At one point in your growth when you were a teenager, between 12 to 18, can you guys remember that far? I, I stretched Charlie's mind the other day about, and you're going to make it into my sermon, congratulations. But if you can remember being a teenager, at one point in your growth, you discovered that your parents' world was not there was to life. Would you agree with that? Discover that there's more to life than what your parents have <clears throat> ordained for you. Unless you're my teenager and you're living under my house, do not listen to this, okay? But, 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 but you, when you were a teenager, you're like, man, there's more. There's more to life. There's more freedom available to me outside of my parents' purview, yes? Uh, 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 outside of my parents' authority. Good freedom, bad freedom, that's for you to decide. You, you realize that there was more, and then you wanted to, to live life freely. You know, that's why many of you uh, grew your hair really long and, and, and went into the hippie movement and, and played the guitar on the beach. And, and none of you? Oh, come on. I heard stories. No? Okay. We love you still. That's good. But then you discovered, you, you, you know there's more, but then you discover you need money. Yeah? You need your parents' money. So, so, so freedom is great on the other side, but you need your parents' money to be able to get to that freedom. Hmm. No? Okay, that was just me. That's cool. 
part of this growth and development of, of teenagers becoming in future adults is that there, there's a discovery of the benefits and the responsibilities of freedom, yes? As an adult, I'm going to talk to you, my, my favorite crowd over here. As an adult, we just have the best life. Come on, make it believable, friends. Yeah, best life ever. We have to do the laundry, we have to cook, we have to buy clothes, we got to clean a house. Um, as an adult, we have a lot more choices, but also more responsibility that we have to, 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 to deal with, which is kind of annoying. Individual growth is so good, yes? That's a principle that you find throughout the Bible from birth to infancy to childhood to teenagehood to adulthood to late adulthood. We don't have a term for that, I think. There's a time and a season for everything. Growth is part of your life. Growth, spiritual growth, is part of your life. It's not something that just happened when you became a believer. It's something that needs to happen every single step of your walk with Christ. Growth is part of your life. You need to keep on growing, spiritually speaking, and keep on discovering new things about God. Can I take you back to your favorite childhood memory? Okay, think about when you were five. Anybody, anybody's got a, a good memory? Think about when you were five. One of my favorite memories that I like to, I like to revisit one, once in a while when I was five, six, I think. Things were simpler back then, yeah? You ever say that? Oh, things were so much easier in the, back in the day. Things were so much simpler when I was five. five. Uh, things were a lot harder when I was five, too, because I could not feed myself and I could not do anything I wanted, really. But I remember vaguely a toy that I have received. Who has a favorite toy that they remember from when they were a little kid? Oh, man. Three people? Come on, people. Favorite toys? It could be Legos, obviously. <laughs> it could be... Tonka, Tonka trucks. It could be stones. I don't, I don't know, sticks. Anybody play with sticks a lot? Do some bows, bows and arrows. There we go. I did lots of bows and arrows when I was a kid. I even one day cut the recording. I even one day went to my neighbor's pond to hunt uh, for fish. I was not a good shot, so it did not happen. But I, I, I had the intent to. Okay. I remember, I remember vividly those, those, those fond memories that, you know, playing with the toys. I wish I could go back there. Uh, but I, I'm certainly glad that I'm not five years old anymore. Would you agree with that statement? I'm certainly glad that I've not stayed there my whole life. I'm certainly glad that there was a little bit of growth in my life that God had ordained for me to, 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 to grow into and that God took me through this journey of life. I'm certainly glad that about all the personal and emotional growth that I did over the years, yes, those were good years, but we can't stay there. If you have some spiritual markers, if you're an older Christian, 10 years or older of being Christian, you have spiritual markers in your life. If you've been a Christian for 40 years and you have spiritual markers from 27 years ago, don't stay there. God is taking you and bringing you into newness of relationship with him. Don't stay Yes, yes, the memory is amazing. The memory is so good. We can go back to it. We can revisit it. We can look at it. We can say, man, God, you were just so good to us. Praise the Lord. You were so good to us. The way I grew in my, in my faith when I was 17, it was so good to us. But I'm not 17 anymore. The way I discovered the Lord and His, and His, His, His Holy Spirit in my life, and, and, and I used to, I used to um, uh, fast when I was 15, 17. Yeah, yeah, it's good, it's good. Fasting, it's a good thing. Anyways. And I grew a lot. And I grew a lot. And I grew in stature. And I grew in, in stature, taller also. But I grew in my faith a lot. But I'm not 17 anymore. I'm not 17 anymore. I can look at it back and long for it, but God is saying there's newness of life today available for each and every one of you. There's newness of life available for you. There's more growth. There's more discovering of his goodness. There's more discovery of his mercy in your life. There's more discovery of his love in your life. Thank the Lord I don't know everything about his love yet for my own life. 
Thank the Lord that he is going to keep opening doors of favor and, 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 and things like that in my life. So good. It's the same with spiritual growth. We can't stay babies in our faith. We can't stay toddlers bumping into things left and right. <laughs> Who's got some toddlers in their lives? Do you record them? Please record them. <laughs> Great home videos. 20 years from now, you'll be like, oh, he was so cute. One of my daughters just had a birthday, and through the years, you know, I see the pictures that I've posted on Facebook, and, and like, oh, you were you were such a cute little girl. And now she talks back, Lord, take me home. I'm just kidding. Growth is so good for us. And our spiritual growth is directly connected to our relationship with Jesus. Yes? So Jesus said in, in John 6, I think, that uh, John 14, one of the Johns, that he's the vine, thank you, and we are the man, you're a smart bunch. Thank you. We are the branches. Our growth happens when we are directly connected to him. And that's so good. Sometimes we forget about it. If we neglect that, that direct connection, that direct relationship, what's going to happen is that growth is going to slow down. Growth is going to slow down. And growth, if it slows down too much, at one point it can stop. It can stop. Has any of you experienced a stop in your spiritual growth? If you're honest with yourself and with the Lord, I think a lot of us have experienced either a slowdown, not talking about just right now, or a stop in our progression. That is something that needs to be addressed to the church so that we keep growing and growing and growing and becoming more than what we used to be. Oh, let's put a verse in there. John 8, 31, 32. Jesus told the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. You will know the truth. The truth will set you free. We love this second part of the verse. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I love this part of the verse. But the, the condition is to stay in him and to believe in him and to holding on to his, to his teachings and being really his disciple. I've got a few comparative uh, words. The NASB, it's another version, it says to continue in my word. The NLT, the New Living, the New Life, New Living Translation, sorry, um, says to uh, remain faithful to my teachings. All right, so good. I had to put the King James Version. If you continue in my word, if you abide in my word for the ASV, there's this understanding that we have to stick with it. We have to remain planted. We have to remain faithful. We have to remain strongly attached to the source of our life. Not just to hear and then forget about it, but holding on to Jesus' teaching. And then, thank the Lord, the truth will set you. Oh, you're good. The truth will set you free. Maybe it's bondages from the past that you need to be set free from. Maybe it's memories of trauma that you need to be set free from. Maybe it's, it's issues that you need to be set free from currently. But the Bible tells us you have to stay and continue in God's word and Jesus' teachings in order to experience the freedom that you're looking for. We need to develop this, this spiritual Grit, what a great word. Not grits, I know it's almost lunchtime. Anybody likes grits? I don't like grits. Oh, put your hand down, okay. <laughs> With butter? Oh. Okay. But now you have a word associated with this sermon or an image. We need to develop this spiritual grit, this spiritual resilience. Resilience, can you say that word with me? Resilience. Resilience, where you keep going even when it's hard. You keep going, you still stay faithful, you remain, you abide, you stay connected to Jesus and to your church even when it's hard. You know what's hard is that the devil, he plans, sorry for speaking about him, but he plans to make you forget about God's word. <laughs> that is his only thing he can do. 
He wants you to be disconnected as far as possible from God's word. He wants to make you forget about God's goodness. He wants to make you uh, not remember all that God has done. He wants to disconnect you from the word of God as much as possible. He'd rather infuse you and distract you with things that have no value than allow you to spend time in God's word. Be mindful of this. He, he would rather fill your mind with things that don't satisfy or that, that produce like a, a little you know, happy feeling for a short amount of time, and, but not a real deep joy. He would rather distract you at all costs. If you know anything about the American culture, it's the American culture of distraction. There's so many good things, so many things we can do and get distracted by, and, and, but then we forget about spending time connected to our Father. I had this thought a couple of weeks ago as I was pre prepping for this sermon, and I, I just, you know, sometimes thoughts come to my mind, and uh, I wrote it down. I had to stop on the side of the road and screech, you know, anyways. In heaven, which is our ultimate goal, in heaven, we won't be asking how was your entertainment, yes? In heaven, we're not going to be asking how was your entertainment on earth, but how was your commitment? And maybe it was directed at me. I'm sharing it for free. There's a trademark to it. You can copy it if you want to. In heaven, all of our distractions will fade away. What will remain was our commitment to staying connected to Jesus. So spiritual growth. Oh, it's 10.55. Awesome. Spiritual growth is a multi-level effort. Yeah? There's a personal level. I choose to grow. Who could say that today? Okay. So you've made a personal commitment to grow, growth and growing spiritually. I choose to grow. This is my life. I'm not going to let distractions get in my way. I'm going to grow. I'm not sure what it's going to look like, and I don't even know what God is going to take me through. But I choose to follow him and to grow in my spiritual faith without looking to the left or to the right. I'm focused. He's my life. He's everything to me. I choose. I believe. I, I, I. And that's good. If you choose to grow, it's good. It's not going to be taken away from you. If you invest your time, little kids, little people, little people, teenagers, if you invest your life in the kingdom of God, it won't be taken away from you. You'll never be dis disappointed. Now, people may disappoint you, but God is not going to disappoint you. He sees your faith as you invest more and more. He sees your faith and he rewards those who seek him. And then there's a corporate level. So that's the church level. Hey, guys, we've got groups. Woo! Oh, three people. Okay. Guys, we've got groups, connection groups. We've got gathering groups. We've got all types of groups. So that together we can come together and do what? Grow. Oh, you're good. Those are groups that we come up with and we're like, hey, you know what would be great? To study about fly fishing. I mean, that is great, and I love fly fishing. Oh, you love, you love fly fishing. And I think it's an amazing thing to be able to take guys and connect together in a different environment where we can talk about Jesus and life. Yes? We've got different groups. We've got uh, even volleyball is amazing. I'm looking at my volleyball crew over there. Volleyball is amazing. You break ankles, you strain muscles, but you have fun doing it, and then you don't come back for a while because your back is hurting. Personal story. But we create those connections, those, those connections that maybe you will not be able to, to, to create if you did not spend time together as fellow believers. And then we have, we have those Wednesday night groups that we have going on and everything where we have our young adults group. We're going through the study of the book of Acts. Whew, what a book. What a testimony. What an amazing survey of all that God has done to create what? His Church, maybe we should do a study together on the book of Acts. Amazing, amazing. But those are corporate level growth groups that, that we have available. We've got a group on, um, help me out, Exodus. Yes, Jessica teaching Exodus. Dennis teaching Mark. James, <laughs> I was still in Mark, sorry. 
I am coming back. Okay, good. We have Josh and Karen teaching about unoffendable, unoffendable, how to become a believer that does not get offended by everything. Hmm. That's good. As believers, we should not be going from offense to offense. <laughs> Did you believe that? Man, we're the, we're the people of the redemption. We're the people of the forgiveness. We've received forgiveness. We extend forgiveness. As believers, we cannot stay, stay in the offended mindset. And then there's a the discipleship effort. You know, discipleship is, hey, you need to grow. Let's get you growing. But not in a condescending way, in a loving way. You know, if you take, if you, if you have like a mentor, if you're mentoring somebody that's younger in the faith, that is amazing and that is so commendable. Amen? So this inv individual aspect of growing personally, it works very well when you spend time in God's Word, with God's people. What else? On a daily basis? On a weekly basis? On a monthly basis? <laughs> Sometimes we go through, through highs and lows of commitment. Highs and lows of commitment where we're like, oh yeah, I'm committed, 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 and then oh, I'm distracted. <laughs> go back down. Oh, and then committed, 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 and then it's baseball, baseball season, which is not a real sport, by the way. <laughs> or soccer season, which is a real sport, by the way. And we get distracted from distraction to distraction, and then we forget our commitment along the way. God, help us to stay focused on you. I have a lot more to talk about. It's going to be my time to close fairly soon. But listen to this. As spiritual leaders, not just myself, but spiritual uh, team, spiritual team, <laughs> pastoral team, and the deacons team, and all of that good stuff, there's a corporate expectation, yeah? A church-wide expectation of addressing topics that are relevant to individuals. Can you agree to that? There's, there's an expectation that the church addresses things that come up in society. We have to address those things. We have to address those things. I cannot wait for 2024 election. Is that next year? Is that right? Am I off? It's good? Is it next year? Okay. I just can't wait. Because our role as a church is not to take sides of partisanship, left, right, middle, whatever. Our goal as a church is to express God's word through it all. That God is for the unborn, that God is for justice, that God is for the widows and the orphans and so on and so forth. That God has a plan despite our political affiliations. And I cannot wait to talk about this more. Oh, you can wait. I, I can see it in your face. You're like, please do not talk about politics. Thankfully, I am not American. Anyways. <laughs> Maybe one day. So uh, the, the church in, in global, you know, glo the global church, the, the local church as well, you know, we've got, we've got this, this responsibility to address things that are coming up in the world through the lens of God's word. Yes? Amen. Okay. Sometimes we, we have to do those, those, those sermons like raising children. I almost misread this and I almost said <laughs> raising chickens. And I'm like, well, that's just about the same. Chickens and children <laughs> absolutely the same. There's truth in raising one and the other. Or developing healthy relationships. Yes, we need to see God's word in developing healthy relationships or marriage studies. Sometimes we, we have those, uh, there, there are some crises that, that arise and we have to, to have those uh, direct pulpit intervention. DPIs, yes, people, I came up with that DPI, direct pulpit intervention, where we have to discuss things that come up in our community or in our faith or, or in the world that needs to have God's word enlighten it. Those are so good. But sometimes in my, in my growth, in my spiritual growth, there are things that are going to be coming in the way of my growth. Would you agree with this? I think we may have it on the screen. And the first one is, go ahead and read that first one. Oh, boy. You went there. I did. 
the first one that you have to take under control is me. Is that hard for you to say? They're like, no, I already know. That's the problem. Fix me, Jonathan. I can't fix you. <laughs> Only God can. The first thing that gets in the way of my spiritual growth and your spiritual growth is you or me, me or you, you know. Not me for you, but you yourself, you know. I'm not coming in the way of your spiritual growth. <laughs> Only you can. And then unresolved conflicts. Can you agree to that? Disobedience. Oh, man, that's active disobedience. Not good. Unforgiveness. If God tells you to forgive your brother 70 times, 7 times, but you stop at zero, you have an unforgiveness problem that's preventing you from learning about God and growing your faith. A greedy heart. The Bible talks about being a cheerful giver, judging others unfairly or with hypocrisy. That is probably one of the things that's so dangerous to Christian believers is that sometimes we desire growth. Growth, we wish for thinking growth. However, we are judgmental in the way we talk about others. Would anybody relate to this? Okay, I'll raise my hand for everybody. That's great. Life's allure and distractions. What a great word, allure. We don't use that word enough. Do you guys use that word? Or is it just a French word? Allure. And I cannot not say it in French. So allure, yes. Life's allure that's distracting us from doing the best thing and i added one more because my daughter and i in the car this morning she was like hey dad what's up with gossip can we talk about gossip and i said oh yes sweetheart let's talk about people that's what gossip gossip is when you have a negative things to say about people whether it's true or not is not the issue but that's a problem gossip gets in the way of relationship If you have your Bibles with you, let's read Ephesians 4, 17, 32. I know it's a long passage. We're going to finish up with this. But I think it's good to allow the Word of God to do the speaking and the teaching of His people. Paul gives us a, a list of things that, that get in the way of our spiritual maturity and prevent us from connecting and from experiencing unity in the body, unity within ourselves, or our spiritual growth overall. And I think we have it on the screen as well. So I tell you this, this is Paul speaking, and I insist on it in the Lord. Well, it must be important then that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding, separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they've given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. Verse 20. That, however, is not the way of life that you've learned. When you heard about Christ and you, you were taught in Him, you remained in Him, you were attached to Him, you were connected to Him, you were planted in Him in accordance with the truth that is Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life, to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made, made new in the attitude of your minds. And it put on what? The new self created to be like God into righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of, you, if each of us must put off, and here's your list, falsehood, lies, gossip, Speak truthfully to your neighbor. Be all members of one body. Oh, that's good. Be all members of the church. Be all members of a sometimes dysfunctional body, but that's created to be the hope of the world. And then it says, in your anger, don't sin. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Do not give the devil, the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. You're not the same that you were. But you must work or doing something useful with your own hands so that they may have something to share with those in need. Listen to this, verse 29. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. As believers, we have a standard of purity that needs to come out of our mouth. But only what is helpful in building others up according to their needs, blessing others, that they may benefit those that it may benefit those who listen 
Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, gossip, every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ, as in Christ God forgave you. So this was your Bible reading of the day. Congratulations. Mark it in your calendar to go back to that passage. And as, uh, as the band is going to be coming and we're going to be closing, what is preventing you from growing in your faith? What is currently preventing you from growing in your faith? And that's for you to know. Maybe it's complacency, which is a feeling of smug or uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievement. Maybe it's apathy. I had to look up the definition. It's a lack of interest. And I cannot say that second word, so I won't, I won't say it. Enthusiasm okay. or concern. Maybe you, you're experiencing a decline, which is a gradual or continual loss in strength, numbers, quality, or value. Maybe you've plateaued in your spiritual life, where you've, you've had growth, and then you've kind of let the cares of the world take over. And you're, you're at this spot where you're like, man, what's the point anyway? Like, I, I don't feel the same way I used to, and I feel like I'm going down in my spiritual journey. Please, if it is you, if it is one of you, please reach out to one of your pastors. As pastors, we're here to walk with you. Did you know that? I don't just clean up messes. I also walk with people. As pastors, as spiritual shepherds, we have your best interest and heart to help you go, not from decline to plateau and decline. We want to see you grow. Would you agree with this? We want to see you grow. I want to see what each and every one of you is going to discover in their life as they follow Jesus, as they decide to follow after him, as they decide to not let the temptations of the world get in the way, as you guys decide to keep on pursuing after Jesus. I want to see that. I want to see that. Go ahead and stand with me. Jesus, may today be the day where we enter into this renewal phase, this deciding of going after you, of pursuing after you, of not looking to the left and to the right, but actually following after you wholeheartedly. Today, God, I pray that today will be a spiritual marker day for each and every one of us, where if we're already growing, praise the Lord. There's more growth to be happening. If we're plateauing where things are just not the way they used to be and you don't understand things, you don't, you don't feel the way you used to be about faith and church and spiritual growth and all that good stuff, God, I pray that you, through your Holy Spirit, will renew our minds so that we can stay connected to you. If, if there's anybody declining in their faith, I pray that they'll take the time to be honest, about it with themselves, but honest with any spiritual mentor that is available. God, I hope that next week we'll have meetings upon meetings with your flock, talking about how they can grow closer to you. I pray your blessing over this flock, Jesus. I pray for your amazing uh, anointing to go with them wherever they go, Lord. I pray that you will be with them every step of the way. I pray that this week they will have encounters. They'll be able to say that they have been in the presence of the Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. You know, it's really easy for us to connect together. All you have to do is follow us on our Facebook page. You can follow the links below to give online, or you can stop by the office. Come and see us. We have this special gift for you, the Word of God for today. It's an easy daily devotional that will help you uh, to connect with God in a really awesome way. So have a great day, and we hope to see you back soon. Bye-bye.